So I've been pretty behind on schematics in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies due to a really horrible bug that I was dealing with for over a month where I couldn't progress in any of the missions and I was just spending my time trying to fix that bug. So I'm definitely quite behind, but I've been trying to catch up and just trying to find all the best ways of getting schematics as fast as possible. And it's very obvious that besides the ones that you get through the missions, the best way to get schematics as fast as possible is just by grinding tier three contracts again and again and again until eventually you get lucky enough and you actually get those more difficult to earn schematics from the tier three contracts. But the more I've thought about this schematic system and how it actually works itself with the cooldowns, the more I've realized how badly designed it actually is, especially for a console game. Now, cooldowns are a pretty standard thing in mobile games. If you've ever played any mobile game, you know cooldowns are a big part of that. But it's a very different thing because, first of all, it's a mobile game. So to be honest, we don't really have much standards for them to begin with. But even then, because you have your phone always with you, if you need to wait for a cooldown on a mobile game, it's fine because your phone is always going to be on you. You can have an eight hour cooldown for something. Wherever you are eight hours from now, you're probably going to have your phone on you so you can pull out your phone when that eight hours is done and just do the little thing you have to do in the game real quick and then you're good to go. Like that's completely fine. But in a console game where obviously you're not going to have your Xbox, your PlayStation, your PC, it's not always going to be there. It's not always going to be something you're going to have access to. So when you have a cooldown, by the time the cooldown is up, chances are you're not going to still be playing the game by that time. And chances are, unless you do this for your job, like let's say you're a content creator on this game, then that's different, of course. But chances are you're not going to be setting your entire day, your entire schedule around based on this game. You're not going to be like, OK, I'm going to play right now, I'm going to use my items, and then the cooldowns are going to be done within, let's say, five to six hours for some of the items. So in five hours, I will play again so I can use those items again. You're not gonna do that if you're an average person. Like you're, you're not planning your day around Call of Duty zombies. Now, that's obviously different, like I said, for content creators, but most people are not gonna be doing that. So chances are that five hour cooldown is really no different than like a 24 hour cooldown because let's say you play every night. That's like your thing. You play once a night and that's all you have time for because the average person's probably only gonna have time for once or twice a night. So you do that and you have to now wait the next night to play again. So that five hour cooldown is really no different than a 24 hour cooldown, which there are some schematics in this game that do have a 24 hour cooldown, even some that have a 48 and up to three day long cooldown, which is insane to me. And I understand why it exists, but I just don't think it should. The insured weapon cooldown is less of a problem because you actually get to keep that weapon assuming you don't die. So if you get to exfil successfully, you're going to keep it anyway. So it's not like you're only able to use those insured weapons, you know, once in a blue moon. Well, that's assuming you keep that weapon with you. And the insured weapon cooldown is only like two hours or something. So it's really not a big deal. And you can get multiple of them as well. So once you have three insured weapons, it's never going to be a problem. And obviously taking in schematic items is not required, but it significantly makes the game more enjoyable just because of the fact that there's a 45 minute, you know, countdown timer when you're playing. So going around, getting best your best weapons, pack a punching, all the perks and everything like that, it just takes way too long. And so by the time you're able to get everything you need, usually the timer's up and you're not really, you don't have much time to actually enjoy like the tier three zone and doing contracts and such. So it is in your best interest to bring in some perks, some, you know, ether tools, maybe even some ether crystals so you can actually pack a bunch of items and level them up as fast as you possibly can. And also your stash items, sure, you can use some of those as well, but you only have up to 10 available items at a time, which is ridiculously low. Obviously, you also have the items that are in your person itself, the ones that you carry on with you, but still, it's just never enough for what you kind of need within the match. So schematics are really important and they're fun. I do enjoy being able to spawn in with those things. But aside from a few different items, the cooldowns just really ruin the schematic system. So of course the cooldown exists as a way to balance out the system. So they have to put something in place of it. They can't just remove the cooldown and let you spawn in with every single perk and every wonder weapon just because you unlock the schematic. Obviously that wouldn't work. So here's my ideas of what could replace it. I have a couple different things I'm gonna bring up. The first one being simply just a system where the more you play the game, it makes the cooldown go faster. So of course, let's say you have a five hour cooldown on an item. And normally if you just stopped playing, it would just still take five hours. But the more you kept playing, it would decrease the time it takes to actually get that item back. So let's say you played 
another two games in a row right after that, and they each took about an hour long, making it about two hours of gameplay. That should speed it up enough to the point where after those two hours, that five hour cooldown is now finished because you've been playing actively during that time. This will just incentivize people to play more because currently the cooldown system honestly does the opposite of incentivize you playing more. It just makes you want to wait an extra day to play again. So if they were to do a system like this, it could make people actually want to play even more. So instead of them waiting five hours to get the next item, they could just grind the game out for another two hours. And then that should be enough to be able to get the item again for that third game. They could also do it so let's say you don't die in that game where you use these items and you successfully exfil at by the end of the game it should also decrease the actual cooldown time itself so instead of it being five hours let's say you play a game and you successfully exfil now those items you use instead of it being a five hour cooldown it's now going to be maybe half of that or if it's a you know two day cooldown it's only going to be one day cooldown so just a way to make it a lot faster as you actively play more, which is what they should be doing. They should always be incentivizing people to keep on playing, which is great for player retention. And it's also great to just get people to enjoy the game more so they can actually feel rewarded for playing the game. Now, those two things would definitely be the easiest options that they can implement. It wouldn't really take much work for them to do it. But my other idea is a lot more complex and I do think would be a better system, but I just don't see this ever being included in this game. And maybe they'll add a system like this for the next Call of Duty, the next time they do some sort of mode like this. But my other idea is adding another in-game currency that is separate from COD points and this currency you only earn through actually playing the game. Maybe they can even throw this currency in the battle pass or in bundles as well. It could be anywhere really, but for the most part, you're going to be earning it just by playing the game, whether it's doing daily challenges or just playing. You'll just earn them just like you earn crypto keys and salvage back in the prior Call of Duty games that had those. And also Cold War had the Ethereum crystals as an in-game currency. So they can throw in some sort of currency like that. And you use this currency for a one-time purchase of any item that you've already unlocked with the schematics. So let's say, of course, you unlock the Raygun schematic. Now you can use it whenever you want, as long as you have enough currency for it. So let's say the currency is Ethereum crystals. Let's just, you know, use the same currency as Cold War, I guess. And so well, we'll turn it to keys, actually, because that might get confused with the crystals you use to pack a bunch of guns. So let's say they're just simply keys, right? That's what you get. And let's say you need 100 keys for a ray gun. So if you only earn like 50 keys in one match, maybe that's how much you earn in a singular match. Not every match you'll get that same amount, just depending on what you do in the match, how long you stay in the match. Let's say you earn 50 keys. Now you got to play a whole nother game to earn enough to buy that ray gun and then you buy it, you get one time use for it. And now all those keys are gone. And of course, the more you play, the more you're going to earn them. So maybe you can just save them up and get as many keys as you want. So you can just keep purchasing the stuff as you wish. And also, of course, other items would be a lot cheaper. Obviously, Raygun will probably be one of the more expensive ones. But when you go down to like the Ether tools and stuff like that, the different perks, there may be like only 20 keys, 10 keys each. So you can just keep buying those as much as you want again as long as you have the keys available so it still incentivizes you to keep playing to get more keys but you're also able to still get these items on a frequent basis rather than having to wait for like two days on a cooldown which is again a stupid system instead of just waiting for the cooldown you have to actually jump in and play in order to get more keys to use on the items that is a much better system and feels much more rewarding for the player and I think this system would be a great thing to introduce because I personally think this exact idea is how they should handle Gobblegums within Call of Duty 2024. If you guys don't know, Gobblegums have been leaked to be returning in the next year's Call of Duty Zombies game, which could be a really good thing. It could be a bad thing. It really depends on how they implement them. But I personally think the way to earn them should be through a very similar system to this, where you earn some sort of in-game currency and you can just purchase the items for a one-time use as you go along. This would also allow for an endless grind in the game that gives players a way to constantly earn towards something that they can use as long as they ever play this game. Like, think about it. They could just constantly be grinding for keys for all of eternity if they really wanted to. They can, you know, save them up if they want. They can save up like a thousand keys and then maybe just use them all at once or they can just use them as they go. Every time they load in, maybe they want to use some of their keys and some of their items. And maybe you get like daily rewards for keys. Maybe every day you log in, you get like 10 keys or like a, like a daily bonus or something like that. So it keeps people coming back every single day to use those keys on the schematics. And of course you still have to earn the schematic items themselves through, you know, getting the schematic itself. You have to, that's how you unlock it. But then once you unlock it, now you can freely use these keys 
on any of those items. This to me would be the perfect system, but obviously it does sound like a lot for them to add when the game has already been released for over a month now. So I think the other two ideas are just a little bit more realistic, but I think this last one is just a better system all around. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think of the schematic system within Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Zombies? Personally for me, like I said, not a fan of it, mainly because of those cooldowns. So I will see you guys all in my next one. Peace out.